went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon, now you all know Simon, and those who are gathered, these disciples are with them. They're looking for Jesus. They actually find him. They search for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. In other words, urgency came knocking. Jesus is praying, and his own disciples interrupt him. They come and they're like, Jesus, thank God we found you. Everybody's looking for you. It's almost like, could you imagine them kind of scolding him a little bit? Like, how dare you leave our presence for this long? We have a whole city gathered outside. You know, all the people we prayed for last night? Well, word got out and the rest came along. And, and, and I could see Jesus here. Uh, you could see the response. Well, if everybody needs me, here I am. Let me go and meet the need. But Jesus doesn't do that. The conflict in what Jesus did in the very next verse, in verse 38, when you actually look at it, here's what he says. He says, no, we got to leave these people and we have to go to Galilee. Because I have another city that I got to go to. And while I'm there, I have a lot of towns. And I have to go all over that region. And I have to preach in the synagogues. And I have to cast out devils. What, Jesus? Don't you see all the urgent needs? Everybody's here. Can't you camp out a two or three more days? Jesus says no. How can he say no so so confidently? How can he say no with, with such conviction? How can he say no without even hearing what the need was? I mean, all the text messages came in. Jesus, we need you here. Because he prayed and he heard the Father. And the Father said, Jesus, your assignment here is done. And it's time to go there. Those people need you now. Isn't that a great model for us? I mean, imagine if we followed his secret. Surrounded by urgency that we all have in our daily lives. But we had a routine where before we did anything, we met with the Father. 